that's my concern. Is this about talking tough? You know, you've got the name chain gangs and you say, oh, and they'll be pointed out, we'll know who's paying back to society, they've got a fluorescent jacket on. But what I want to know, are they serving a sentence? This mm. is instead of, so are we talking tough, but actually not putting people in prison who should be? launching the government's crime plan earlier this week, the Prime Minister turned heads when he said those guilty of antisocial behaviour should be in fluorescent, jacketed chain gangs. I also want to see those who are guilty of antisocial behaviour uh, properly uh, paying their debt to society. And, you know, somebody's antisocial behaviour may be treated as a, as a minor crime, but it can be deeply uh, distressing for those who are victims. And if you're guilty of antisocial behaviour, I don't see, and, and, and you're sentenced to, to, to unpaid work, as many people are, I don't see any reason why you shouldn't be out there in a, one of those fluorescent jacketed chain gangs visibly paying your debt to society. And so well, you're going to be seeing more of that as well. As part of a wider announcement on fighting crime, the Prime Minister also said that restrictions on stop and search powers that were eased in 2019 to allow police to carry out searches 24 hours a day are to be made permanent. These measures have been heavily criticised by human rights groups, including Liberty and the criminal justice charity Fair Trials. So, Caroline, where do you stand on this? Well, maybe the Prime Minister needs to have someone following him around with an umbrella and on a chain. It's all uh, right, he can do him out he like can that. carry his own uh, umbrella, well, like us, well, like not, you and me. Well, if anyone saw the photo with it going AWOL with Prince Charles this week. But anyway, look, I think, um, I think if you, as an alternative to a custodial sentence for lots of people, some sort of community payback is really important. I mean, the chain gang phrase is provocative, isn't it? Nobody's going to be chain gags. They're not going to be manacled together like, you know, in that film HUD, I think it was, with Paul Newman, where they were literally out breaking rocks on the side of the road somewhere in America. But, you know, I've seen how, you know, over many years, and I'm sure you have as well, is actually community payback where offenders, part of their, you know, sentence, particularly often when they're coming to the last six months, they can go and do stuff in the community. Or, as an alternative to jail, is not a bad thing. But, but... If we're really going to be serious about stopping reoffending, whether it's a custodial in prison sentence or something in the community, it's how do you make sure they don't return to crime? And I just think we need more attention on that. Mm -hmm. Education, getting to work. Companies like Timpsons, you know, Esther, they take on a huge number of ex-offenders and, and they do a fantastic job and we need to hear more about that. And I guess my concern, is this about talking tough? You know, you've got the name chain gangs and you say, oh, and they'll be pointed out, we'll know who's paying back to society, they've got a fluorescent jacket on. But what I want to know, are they serving a sentence? This mm. is instead of, so are we talking tough, but actually not putting people in prison who should be? I'm interested in reoffending rates, re Really, are we rehabilitating people or actually do they see this as a soft touch and aren't and actually do they need prison? Because there's two sides, isn't there? There is an element of punishment and there is an element mm. of rehabilitation. People need to have faith in the justice system and if you've committed a crime, you do need to go behind bars, think about it. But at the end of the day, it's about we don't want people reoffending. Mm. And yes, I get that payback, you know, your service, uh, you know, pay the price as it were back to society, but who is overseeing it? How do you make sure that these people are doing what they're meant to be okay. doing? How do you make sure that they're turning up every day? So I think there's, there's two different sides here. One, I certainly don't want us to talk tough, but actually we're not. And I think what you say later there about what the Timpsons do and other businesses do about employing ex-offenders, well, the big thing is they are ex-offenders. Yeah. They have changed their life. They're now doing a job. And I don't know, uh, and, and it'd be good to speak to maybe one of the Timpsons family another time but how do they select them why how do they know that really they want to change their ways what has mm -hmm. changed their mm -hmm. life round so I think it was a lot of talk uh, but I personally need to know that these people yeah. aren't reoffending oh absolutely and you know it 
you know, if it was also a way about keeping prison numbers down, you know, you can't do this on the cheap. No. I mean, I know, <laughs> I know that over the years we've had, you know, in Doncaster where I live and where I represented, we had lots of community groups who were actually benefited. By, we have, I had three prisons in my constituency. I think we've got four in Doncaster as whole, two open prisons. But a lot of our community groups would, you know, they were always looking for some of the offenders to be able to come out and help them with community projects where mm -hmm. they often didn't have the muscle <laughs> to do some of the work. But one of the problems was finding the supervisor. So, you know, for everyone who might be out on the street picking up litter, you've got to have supervisors. And what we found often was that when we did want to provide that sort of activity for people who were in prison, there weren't enough supervisors. So you can't do this on the cheap. It has to be thought through. And you're absolutely right. It's also about thinking about how do you stop reoffending. I was really interested, um, uh, Esther, to hear that a local Timpsons in Doncaster... Um, and everyone's seen Timpsons, you know, the, the, they do the shoes, they do your keys, they do your dry cleaning, often outside our big supermarkets. And one guy told my husband about how he was coming out on a daily basis from an open establishment in the last six months of his sentence to work in the Timpsons. And, you know, there was someone getting ready for release to take that up full time and have something to look forward to rather than going back to a life of crime. That's what we need to have. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, having worked in the space of getting people uh, employment ready, getting mm -hmm. them work in society, you know, there are basic things like, are they up and out of bed on time? Yeah. Are you arriving yeah. at your job on time? So that supervision can actually be much wider than the supervision oh, of the job on that day. And then what happens if they don't tip up? What happens if they reoffend? Because frequently community service people do reoffend. So mm -hmm. I think this has to be part of a package. Um, uh, and, and I want to know, well, who would be selected for this? And it could be the best of the best who are selected to do this on a journey yeah. and the others need to go to prison. So, uh, so Boris, what we're saying is uh, the jury is out. Yep. We sort of like a little bit what you're saying there, but they do have to have the punishments. They do have to have rehabilitation. Um, so like say the jury's out we don't want to talk tough uh, and actually we're not welcome to the gb news youtube channel you can watch us live 24 hours a day catch up on your favorite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content